Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday the 10th of November 2023. In today's Mill news, um, I'm going to start off with some uh, sad news actually. Um, very, very sad. Uh, a long time Mill fan travelling all over the country following Mill has passed away. Uh, passed away this week. You may recognise her. Um, you've seen that face somewhere down uh, at an away game or down at the den. A coach one regular that's that's Pam um, she passed away this week um, yes um, I up at Wigan away I think it was one of the games where a long time ago uh, well now it is I think maybe in 2015 some some range of that uh, I sat next to her at Wigan away and, and it was one of those games where we got Kind of mocked because I think we had we had really low we had less than a hundred fans going to, to that game, um, and uh, yeah, she was a very nice lady speaking to me, um, sharing a, a sweets and stuff. So kind of sad to hear this news, um, and um, they have uh, put out a request that at tomorrow's game if you go in. I think 1,500 mil fans are going. Um, if you could, on the 77th minute, uh, give out a loud round of applause, that would be very much appreciated in honour of uh, Pam, a uh, lifelong mill fan. So, rest in peace, Pam. Uh, now, moving on to the mill news of the day. Uh, it was an education opportunity. Mill made sure new chairman James Berylson's first boss appointment was for a process. Uh, this is from the londonnewsonline.co.uk, uh, the South London Press's online website. Uh, before I get to that, I just say, I don't know if you can hear it because I don't think the microphone is picking it up, but uh, the piece of junk laptop that I'm filming this on, that has already got a problem with the battery uh, adapter, uh, is now making a really loud uh, screeching noise from the fan for some reason um, so I think it's time I need to buy a new laptop if you can hear that I apologize um, we might have to suffer it for a week or two um, because uh, yeah that's how long it's gonna take me to get a new laptop but uh, hopefully you can't hear it I don't think you can because the, uh, the light on the microphone isn't coming up when I don't speak so I don't think it's picking it up. Uh, Alex Aldridge reckons it was vital that Mill made their search for a new boss just as far as their 2019 process before new cha chairman James Wilson opted for Joe Edwards. The Lions appointed the 37-year-old as their new head coach on Monday. American businessman Berylson has stepped up to become chairman after his father John was killed in a road accident in July. Uh, Gary Rowe was manager at Mill for four years before leaving by mutual consent last month. It is an education opportunity when you are able to openly meet with managers and coaches. So it's really important to speak to a variety as there's always something to take from each meeting, said Aldridge, the Lions Director of Football Operations and Recruitment. There were other people in Joe's mould and some of them we would have met purely knowing it was a relationship builder for the future. Uh, there were people we seriously considered this time around that we met and had gentle conversations with in 2019 when Neil Harris left. They were on the periphery of things four years ago, but are more credible this time around, partly because we started a relationship with them and it was a conversation to refer back to. The pool of candidates is partly determined by who is out of work at the time. You can't really control that, but you can have eyes on other people and be aware if a manager is doing a good job at another club, in a different league, or with a national association. I'm glad we stuck to our plan. This We decided the day Gary left that we would take a minimum of four games. And part of that was because we were really comfortable with Adam taking the team and we wanted to give him a genuine opportunity. So, like I said, if Adam Barrett wasn't dog shit, so that's why Joe Edwards came out of nowhere. They were hoping that Adam Barrett would do well and then they could give it to him because there's, there's a lot of animosity amongst the fans. Not me, I don't really care about Adam Barrett that much. That he was like Gary Rout Mark II, he's Gary Rout's little bitch or whatever, I don't know what they, they think. 
So the people behind the scenes wanted Adam Barrett to get the job when the results didn't come. Uh oh, that's not going to work. What we're going to do? Call Ghostbusters. No, you're going to call Joe Edwards and say, you're going to say, oh, we want you to come and interview for the job. That's why he came out of nowhere. So you think, oh, this is a grand, great big plan, a mastermind. No, this is, this isn't what it is. This is not what they're telling you. They're literally saying it here. We wanted to give him a genuine opportunity. They wanted Adam Barrett to get the job. He didn't get the results. So they panicked and they called Joe Edwards. We had faith in the staff and players. We didn't feel like there was an immediate sense of crisis that we needed to bring someone in. Far from it, really. We felt that what we put in place in 2019 when we appointed Gary worked well. It's well known that when Neil Harris left, he spoke very highly of Gary and he recommended him for the job. But there was still a process. Uh, Steve and I met around 12 candidates in 2019. While Gary was probably quite an obvious appointment and clearly was a strong one, based on what he went on to achieve, it was a result of a very thorough process. We used some different tools and measures to make sure we were covering all bases. Hopefully if you get this right, you're not doing it too often. And that was one of the reasons we decided to take our time. It was a great opportunity for James to meet different players, uh, different managers, and to understand a little bit more about the market, uh, the times that were out there, the, t the types that were out there. James was really keen to see a mix of candidates. Uh, Steve and I worked through the first filter and then James got more involved. Uh, in Joe, the chairman felt that the connection and, and excitement. Uh, Leicester City, Leeds United and Southampton, the trio relegated from the Premier League, are all in the top four. Mill was 1-0 lost to the Saints last weekend, meaning they are 8 points behind 6th place Preston. This division is very strong this year and this appointment presented us with a couple of different courses of direction, said Aldridge. I think people recognise that Joe is a slightly different route and maybe it was a case of changing the tack to come again. This is our seventh season since we got promoted and it's important that we are looking to the future and building the club to be successful at the top end of the championship in a sustainable way. Uh, yeah, I think it's becoming quite obvious and clear that last season was the chance and we fucked it up. That was, as, that was, like, that was it. That was it. You had the three teams that come down with basket cases. There were places to be taken in the top six. We were there in the final day. We were there at half time of the last game and we fucked it up in the second half. And oh dear, oh dear. So what do we do? Do we wait till next season to hope that the teams that come in down are basket cases again? Obviously next season the new TV deal kicks in when we're going to be play, playing games like 8 o'clock on a Sunday night. Um... So we wait for that to get that money. Um, but then what's going to happen? I don't know. But uh, yeah, that was a massive golden opportunity that we just fucked up last season. Um, bad, 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 bad. Uh, so moving on to this, also from the Suffolk News, uh, not the Suffolk News, South London Press, londonnewsonline.co.uk. Head coach role won't stop at Joe Ed as being pivotal to Mill's transfer window plans. Of course not, because there aren't any. What are, what are, what are we going to do? We're going to loan two players, and or we're going to bring the the loan players back, or we're going to loan some more young players out. Like, what are we going to do? We're, we're not, we don't have any money for the training ground. Um, uh, Joe Edwards will be completely involved in Mill's transfer dealings despite the change in job title to head coach for the Den Hot Seat. The 37-year-old is regarded as one of the brightest prospects in the domestic game and has succeeded manager Gary Wright, who left by mutual consent last month. Some Lions fans have debated whether Edwards, who spent more than two decades at Chelsea and worked alongside Frank Lampard and Thomas Tuchel, would not have any input on player trading. But Mill's director of football operations and recruitment, Alex Aldridge, Aldridge has spelled out that that is not the case. He told... The South London Press. The difference in title invites the question, what does that mean? But the reality is it's not going to ch uh, change the way we like to operate, which is always collaboratively. Uh, given Joe's background, I think he would describe himself as a head coach. Uh, what that means is that the structures around, that are around him are club-owned, but he is the, in the middle of that, driving with us. If you take recruitment as an example, then that will be myself, the recruitment department, Joe and the coaching staff working absolutely hand-in-hand. -hand to find the players that will make us better. 
Uh, there are clubs that operate uh, where they sign the players and the head coach gets on with it. I don't think that works. Likewise, I don't think it works when the manager has completely say, complete say over everything. Signs a player and the club just have to get on with it. They pick up the pieces if it goes wrong. So what happens when it goes wrong when there's committee thinking? What happens then? Do you all get fired? Do you, What happens then? You, you all go and stand in the corner? When you're all involved in it and you all fuck it up, what? Oh no, you all cover each other's backs. That's what you do. Or you all turn on each other, saying, oh, you'll say, oh, it's his fault. And he says, no, it's his fault, his fault, no, it's his fault. Aha, uh -huh. gotcha. Uh, there is an happy medium to that, certainly in the championship, the majority operate with. Uh, we're no different. It's also just a subtle nod that there are club held strategies and club held objectives that are for us. Uh, to set and work with Joe to achieve. Maybe with more of the old school manager type, you gave them the keys to the club and paid them to manage the whole club. Uh, we know that in Joe we've got an exciting, energ energetic and dynamic coach, and that is what he is outstanding at. It's about taking away bits of the burden to enable him to focus on what he's very good at. Of course he fits right in with everything else we are doing. Uh, we've got the January transfer window coming up, and beyond that we'll work closely with him to evolve the squad and to keep trying to make it better like we have year after year since we came up to the championship. Uh, by joining us at this point, Joe's got a really good period of games, a couple of months with the busiest Christmas schedule to get a feel for the squad, settle in to the role and make his assessments. Okay. Um, I think there's more. Oh, You can have a very good opinion of players coming in from the outside, but that may, uh, may be only 50% of it. There will be players in our squad that will probably surprise Joe as he gets to work more with them. And there will be players in there that might t not turn out what he expected. That will feed into January and what we need. And that will be the process that we work on together. It's The thing is, right, none of this is real. It's all jaw-jaw, you know what I mean? They're all, it's all talk. We have to wait until 3 o'clock tomorrow to find out if this guy knows what the fuck he's doing. Um, and see how we, we get on. Moving on to the last, I believe, the international call-ups, the age-restricted games. England under-19s call-up for Mills Romain SA. Romain SA has been called up to the England under-19 squad for the free, free November international fixtures. The squad will uh, jet off to Marbella. Mm, nice, especially in fucking freezing today wasn't it to play Romania Japan and Mexico with the youngster set to play his part any further call ups from the Mill squad will be announced on this website millfc.co.uk and there are the games no kick off times it's, like it's, it's glorified friendlies isn't it at this level um, because they had a ch the last game that I told you about in the last international break that was a that was a qualifier the ones that were on Macedonian TV and England didn't qualify because they drew... What did they do? They drew 0-0. They drew 1-1. I think they... Did they drew 0-0 again? Or did they lose? And the only one... No, they must have drawn 0-0 because they only scored one goal. And that was Romain Esse. Romain, Romain Esse scored England's only goal in three games. Go figure. Um, so, yeah. So, I imagine these won't... These won't be live. They'll probably put clips of the goals up on the England's YouTube, uh, not YouTube, uh, Twitter. They they clip clip it and put it on Twitter nowadays, don't they? Also, as well as Brook Norton Cuffey called up to the England Under Twenty One squad. Uh, Brook Norton Cuffey has been called up to England's Under Twenty One squad for their November international fixtures. The Arsenal lonely is being included ahead of two Euro qualifiers away in Serbia and at home to Northern Ireland. So there you go. Um, so where is that one then? Is that in London? It doesn't say. Um, so yeah, Serbia is on Saturday. Now these ones they may well be, or some they might be on YouTube because the under twenty one games have been on England's YouTube channel, or they might be on some kind of channel somewhere, especially the that, that England Northern Ireland game. Because obviously that appeals to. Uh, two markets in the United Kingdom area, so that might be on TV. I don't know. I'm not too sure. I'll check up on that, and I'll probably let you know uh, going into next week before the games kick off. I'll let you know where you can watch them. And now, aha! One player who hasn't been announced in an international squad this week, 
I don't know if he's on standby or what. Um, is the wee man Kevin Nisbet? This is from the Daily Record. Uh, the squad, Steve Clark squad. Obviously, they're qualified now. Um, so, the, but they've got games against Georgia and Norway. So, Georgia, not the hardest of games. Norway, they've got what two players? They've got Haaland and and that other guy. Um, so yeah, Haaland could end up being the. Uh, one of the best players to never play at a World Cup, along with George Best. So, but as we go down, you can see Kevin Nisbet not in the squad. Jay Adams, Jacob Brown, Ryan Christie, Lyndon Dykes. Now, is that because Kevin Nisbet's coming back from injury, and he said, "Look, um, if if you, can you not call me up because I'm trying to get fit?" Or I don't think that's how it works. I think they call you up and then they decide if you're fit or not. Uh, I guess I don't know. So has he been dropped, or is he, did he did he ask to be left out because he's coming back from an injury? I don't know. But Kevin is it not in the Scotland squad, so if he starts tomorrow, maybe he's been banging on the manager's the new manager's door. Or no, he's the new manager seems to type to have his door wide open and just say, "Hi guys, uh, if you need to chat to me, just come into my office. Uh, the doors are always open." He seems like one of them, you know what I mean? So maybe Kevin Nisbet's gone in there and said, I need to play because I've just been dropped from the Scotland squad. So he might get a start tomorrow, I don't know. If he does, he better fucking score because if he wants to get in the Scotland squad, you've got to play and you've got to score. So do what you've got to do. Now, moving on to this, which is uh, unfortunate. Uh, this is from millwc.co.uk. Why is this an unfortunate? It's, it's a job advertisement. Uh, Mill Football Club hiring head of Ad academy recruitment. Uh, Mill Football Club is hiring head of academy recruitment. Yada, 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 yada. Uh, closing date for applications is Friday 24th of November. Uh, now, why is this uh, unfortunate? Well, you may remember this story. From the 5th of September, remember, because that's going to be important, 5th of September, Mills Head of Youth Recruitment Barry Dunn suspended for eight weeks. Right. So, eight weeks is two months, 5th of September, 5th of October, 5th of November. So, the eight weeks is up, it looks like he's out. So, did Mill will fire him? Did he quit? Um, did he get paid for those eight weeks when he was suspended? And then he's come back and he's like, he has to go back and he's like, so you waited to quit which is kind of smart like get your wages and then quit um, so he was always probably going to quit he just decided to wait uh, the 8 weeks pick up his, his wages and then, and then fuck off so I don't know or maybe they fired him they probably waited and then they gave him a letter we've got a meeting blah 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 all this shit disciplinary meeting bring someone with you all that if you've ever been in a disciplinary at some kind of office corporate culture it's absolutely fucking tedious so maybe they did that and fire him, fired him, I don't know, but they are now looking for a new person. Um, so, interestingly, it's got all the stuff here. It doesn't say, don't have a Twitter account where, where you uh, retweet Nigel Farage. Maybe you should put that in, put that in there then, if that's going to be a problem. Um, but yeah, absolute stitch up. I made a video about it at the time, it's absolute stitch up. Because uh, what, what happened... Is that Millwall did this deal with this uh, New Gym Sports um, to provide, which is a good idea, to provide Ramadan kits for the Muslim players that are fasting. And then this other woke shithead activist who they um, pretending to be a journalist literally went through everyone who worked at Millwall, tried to find them, found their Twitter account, went through everything. Went through their posts, went through their likes, went, this is what they do. Go, went through their retweets, found this one guy who he didn't mention, it, he just retweeted a few things, uh, which weren't that bad. But um, they got him on the religious one. Um, he mentioned religion. That's the only one they got them on. And he's end up, uh, he's now no longer employed. But uh, yeah, complete fucking stitch up. Um, 
And there you go. What can you do? What can you do? Don't have a Twitter account because these rats will fucking find it and they will stitch you up. So there you go. Uh, but I guess it, it leaves a, a job open for someone if they want it. But here's the thing. What do you think the chances are that they will appoint someone who fits a certain kind of frame rate? You know what I mean? We've all seen it. You watch the adverts on TV. You know what I'm talking about. Why, why, why is this person advertising this product? Like, why are they? Why is every product being advertised with a certain type of person? When those people make up about fifteen percent of the country, that's kind of weird, isn't it? But I guarantee that they're going to do something like that. It just, especially when they're on double secret probation from from who is it? The FA about the. Uh, Chanting at uh, the scumbag uh, man from Londonderry who agitated the Mill fans. But uh, so there you go. Um, if you are of a certain uh, certain persuasion, maybe if you're a woman, you might get it. If you look like me and you're a woman, you might get the job. Um, but if you look like me and you're a man, probably don't. Don't don't apply because I doubt that they'll give it to you. Now, moving on from the nonsense of the clown world that we live in to the real world. And it's about to get very real for Joe Edwards tomorrow. First game ever, ever, that he has managed in a team that is not in an age-restricted competition. He has not managed a man's football team before. Yes, can you believe that? Some say that isn't a problem. I don't know. Now, this is a historical record of Mill's visits to Sheffield Wednesday from the website 11v11.com. Oh, shit. You can see, we first played up there in 1906 in the FA Cup. We got a 1-1 one, one, Draw now. We did not win there in what was that nine games? It took us nine games to win there, and that was in nineteen seventy five. Literally seventy years after the first game that we played there. And then we didn't win again till two thousand and two. You can see if we go down and count them up, we have only won one, two, three. We have only won three games at Sheffield Wednesday in our entire history. Oh shit. Oh shit. I said before, this is a banana skin. They haven't won at They've barely won at home. I think they just won their first home game the other day. They're at the bottom of the table. This is what we all do. They lose to these kinds of... They lose these kinds of games. We lose these kinds of games. Um, we beat... We unexpectedly beat teams at the top somehow... We find a way, and we find a way to fuck it up when we play teams at the bottom of the table. Which is not good, because we're only 18th in the table ourselves. So this is effectively a six-pointer. Um, so the last time out, 7th of November 2020, we drew nil-nil. Before that, it was also nil-nil. If you want to go to the last time we won up there, that's in 2-1 in this league in 2005. Yes, it was that long ago. And then before that, it was 2002. With two, two two wins in a row. Now, there are quite a few draws up there, though. So you can see here, the last two games, nil, 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 nil. Before that, both games, we lost 2-1. And then before that, 1-1, one, one, two twos. And as we go up, there are quite a few draws. There's 72, uh, 2 in 72, January and December, 1-1, one, one, two, two. Um, So, but like I said, in terms of wins, wins... Only three. Only three. That's that's insane. Um, can we get another one? Well, we, we like, but what I say about streaks. So we are now on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven game streak of going to Sheffield Wednesday not winning. Streaks need to end. So that's what I say about streaks. So when's it going to end? It's got to end sometime, isn't it? Is it going to end now on the eighth game? 
tomorrow, the eighth game. Next time, the ninth game. But, but that might be in a while because I think they're certainly going to get relegated unless we get relegated with them. Maybe it will end tomorrow. And maybe it will be the Joe Edwards experience uh, masterclass, coaching masterclass. I don't know. But um, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. The omens are not good. Um, yeah. So what are we in now? We're in November, yeah? So literally the 11th of the 11th for uh, Remembrance Day. Rest in peace. So obviously last time was November 2020. Um, any more in November? Doesn't look like it. Oh, 7th, 7th of November 1970. We lost 1-0. That was it. So... Yeah, that does not look good. Now, moving on to this from uh, whoscored.com. Uh, let's look at the match facts on the right-hand side first. Sheffield Wednesday failed to score in seven of their last eight matches. That's home and away. Sheffield Wednesday failed to win 17 of their last eight matches. There have been under two and a half goals scored in two... In, there have been under two and a half goals scored in five of Sheffield Wednesday's last six games. Okay. So these are the games, the last six, up at Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, we've uh, 1-0, lost two, and drawn four. So maybe it's going to be a draw tomorrow. But in six games, they've scored seven, we've scored five. We've had one red card. They've had 11 yellow cards. And you can see the last two games were nil nils. That's the only clean sheets we had two nil nils in a nil nil draw. Coincidentally, that's the only time they kept clean sheets against us in the last six games when it was a nil nil draw. So it looks like both teams to score or both teams not to score. Like literally, we can't have another nil nil, can we? Three in a row. Has that ever happened before? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's skip past that because I don't care about that shit. Um, so here's the table as it stands. They are rock bottom. 15, uh, after 15 games, 24th in the league. They've won one, drawn three, lost 11. They've only scored seven goals. But I guess if you go down, and we'll get to that in a minute, they scored two goals in their last game. So before that, they scored five. So they literally just scored... They just added two goals to the five goals that they scored. Which in percentage terms is insane. Um, they've conceded 23. Ouch. That's... Damn. Uh, we are 1-4, drawn 5, lost 6. 15 goals, 4. That's average of 1 a game. And 19 against. Um, yes. Yes. So let's look at home and away. So they are the home team. Their home form is just as bad as ours. And if you're a, if you're a Mill fan, you know how bad that is. Uh, they have won one, drawn two, lost four. Now, let's go back down and look, look below. So they've won one, drawn two. Hello. So in their last four games at home, so they were really, 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 really dog shit. All of these good results that they've got there, the, the win and the draw, that's come in their last four games. Last four games, beat Rotherham 2-0, drew 0-0 with Huddersfield, lost to Sunderland 3-0, but then before that, 1-1 draw with Middlesbrough. So that win and that two draws that you see in the table above, that came in their last uh, four home games. So they've certainly improved some, don't you think? Enough to beat us... Who fucking knows, mate? Who knows? Let's have a look at our away record. Not bad. 11th in the in the league. Sheffield Wednesday, uh, as bad at, or worse away than they are at home. They haven't won an away game yet. And they've only got one point away from home. Ouch. Now, we, on the other hand, pretty decent away. Uh, a lot better than we are at home. 1-2, uh, drawn 4. Only lost 1, and that was that game at Norwich. Um, which... Um, was absolutely atrocious and probably kicked off the, the Gary Rowett being mutually departed. Uh, but we've only scored eight goals, we've conceded seven. So defence is very good away from home. Only only losing, uh, we've got a positive goal difference away from home um, and only conceding an average of one goal per game. 
So interesting that, isn't it? Isn't it? Why is that? Obviously, some of these results could have been a bit better. Conceding a last-minute goal uh, against Watford could have won that game. Didn't. Um, before that, was a draw against Preston. Before that, was a win against Plymouth. So we are on a streak of one, two, three, four, five, five game, five away games without losing. What did, what did I say about streaks? Streaks got to end, didn't they? You know what I'm saying? Streaks have got to end. So which streak is going to end? Us going up to Sheffield Wednesday and winning, which we haven't done for a while, or us losing an away game? Oi, oi, oi. So that's the thing. There's two streaks that are in play, and one of them could lose. If we depend, the only one that wouldn't fuck up that on both of them would be a draw. Both streaks continue if it's a draw. Uh, so here's the strengths and weaknesses. So Sheffield Wednesday are very good at protecting the lead, apparently. I guess because that's how they've very rarely been in the lead. So that's probably a kind of a false statistic there. Uh, Mill strengths, uh, set pieces, um, blah blah blah. You can see it there. Read it for yourself. Pause the pause the video. Read it for yourself. Uh, match forecast. Mill will score from a direct free kick, very likely. Uh, Mill will control the game in the opposition's half, likely. Well, we'll see about that. And then moving on to the other page of whoscored.com, the, the preview and the prediction. Um, so, here we go. Let's get past that. Uh, so here we go. Sheffield Wednesday's plans were uprooted inside the opening 32 minutes of their game against Bristol City after Barry Bannon was sent off. Danny Roll's side went on to lose 1-0 at Ashton Gate, meaning they are now 9 points adrift from safety, with just 6 points to their name. Mill came within minutes of closing out a hard-fought goal of straw at home against an in-form Southampton side last weekend, before a stoppage time goal from Ryan Fraser sent the points to the visitors. Joe Edwards takes over with the away side winless in the last five league games. So we're winless, so another streak. We're winless in our last five league games, where we haven't lost in our last five away games. We haven't beaten Sheffield Wednesday in our last, what is it said, seven games, I said? I don't know, something like that. So we've got all these streaks running in play, and who scored.com say they predict that the game will be Sheffield Wednesday 1. Millwall won. So they're pushing it. They think it's just going to... All the streaks are going to continue. Uh, so there you go. Now, moving on to SkySports.com. David Prutton's tips and predictions. What is he saying about this game tomorrow? Let's scroll down and see how far down we are. Obviously, they're going to talk about the games that are on Sky first. Um, but where are we? Have I missed this? Why is the table there? Did I? Oh no, here we are. So, he predicts Sheffield Wednesday 0, Millwall 1. Sheffield Wednesday 0, Millwall 1. Um, uh, earlier, I said I think it's going to be 2-2. Two, two. Um, well, I think we will score, but I think we have... Uh, a problem with uh, conceding late goals. As I said, I think we've got old, we've got old defenders who get tired, and it's not the considered thing to substitute your central defenders. Even though in this day and age, with all the extra subs, no one's doing that now. That might be the new thing. That might be the new fucking Pep Guardiola masterstroke. Take off your tired defenders, put fresh ones on when your opposition. Changes all the attacking players on on the 60th or the 75th minute. That might be the new thing if you want to succeed. Rotate your defence, if, especially if you're trying to defend. Um, so I don't know if Big Joe Edwards has, has figured that out, if he's going to do that. Um, I don't know if you, even if you do that, it will work. I'm not too sure. But we do concede late goals. That's why I said it could be 2-2. Um, nil nil, it could be nil nil. 
I don't think so because I do think we have enough to score against them. But it's whether we can not concede. So I'm going to go literally like the game the other day, where Watford game, where we're going to be 2 1 up and it's going to be 2 2. Probably Lee Gregory right at the end. Um, Lee, yeah, maybe. Maybe Barry Bannon's so a 2 2. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to go for. Um, I hope we win because they, they've uh, pushed this Joe Edwards thing to the, to the limit. They've bigged him up massively. If if we don't win, the the reality is going to start kicking in for a few people. Have been trying to, they've been huffing the copium, thinking, oh, this is this is a great appointment. This is the best thing since sliced bread. Um, well, let's see, let's see about that tomorrow. Um, we'll see. This is a game we should be winning, but if we can. That's another story. So yeah, I'm going to go 2-2. Two, two. And on that note, thank you for watching. And goodbye. I'm just going gonna, gonna, gonna to... I'm going to let you hear this because I don't know if you've been hearing this. This is my fan. Can you hear it? That's what I've been having to listen to the whole fucking video. It's been driving me fucking nuts. Bye-bye.